Okay, before we start, I just wanted to read out um, um, uh, just a few instructions which uh, which the Lord uh, gives you know um, people of Israel, and um, it's uh, it's interesting because it's um, it's uh, it's actually uh, typically for parents. It's uh, more of instruction for parenting, I guess. Um, uh, so I mean, but anyway, let's let's look at that. Right? It's uh, Deuteronomy six and um verses four to nine okay deuteronomy chapter six and verse four onwards it says here o israel the lord our god the lord is one you shall love the lord your god with all your heart with all your soul and with all your strength and these words which i command you today shall be in your heart you shall teach them diligently to your children you shall talk of them when you sit in your house when you walk by the way, when you lie down, and when you rise up, you shall bind them as a sign on your hand, and they shall be as frontlets between your eyes. You shall write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. Okay, um, so here we see some uh, uh, very important pertinent instructions um, from the Lord to um, to the people of Israel, and it, it actually, uh, it's for the family, right? Um, so it is so we start by um, the Lord starts with the Lord saying, you know, who he is, and uh, the Lord, our God, the Lord is one, you know, that's that's what it starts with, and uh, and the second one is to love the Lord with all our hearts, with all our soul, and with all our strength. Okay, so how do we identify with this God who is uh, who is one, the Lord, my God? How do I interact with him, or how do I relate to him? It's a relationship of love. Right? It's a close, intimate relationship um, with, of love, of wholehearted love. Right. So you should love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, everything within you, um, you love. And um, it says, um, from there, uh, um, he goes on to say, okay, uh, I come. Uh, these words uh, which I command you today shall be in your heart. You know, in a, in your innermost being, in your heart. Okay, uh, it's not just uh, intellectual understanding of it or acknowledgement of it, or even you know admiration of instruction. You know, sometimes we can do that. We can say, "Wow, that's beautiful." Um, I think every ideal home should be like this. Uh, we can we can intellectually, you know, acknowledge the thing, but um, but not it. It need not be in our heart. Uh, you know, we need not really hold it. As treasures in our heart, right? Like Proverbs says, you know, treasure these commandments in your heart. Um, so these words, these commandments, shall be in your heart. And then he goes on to say, you shall teach them. Okay, you shall teach them diligently to your children. So it's from that place of relationship. It's that place of you know us treasuring God's commandments, God's word. And us keeping God's uh, word in our heart, from that place, the overflow is this: that we teach our children diligently. Um, so, teaching would mean maybe a formal setting. You know, you're sitting and you're talking, uh, you're teaching the children. Uh, I said you should teach them diligently um, uh, these commands, these words, right? And you shall talk of them. Okay, so it talks about conversation. It talks about informal settings. And if you read that verse, verse 7, it says, You shall talk of them when you sit in your house, when you walk by the way, uh, when you lie down, and when you rise up. Okay, So you see the different settings. It's like an informal thing. First, is, first of all, it's like, okay, teaching could be a formal setting. You're sitting and, you know, like a... Uh, you're teaching something. Uh, why don't you turn to this page? Why don't you look at this verse, etc.? Um, but talking is very informal, and you should talk of them when you sit in your house, when you uh, walk by the way, when you lie down, when you rise up. So, in all the mundane routine things that you do, it could be you know cooking, it could be cleaning, it could be washing stuff, it could be maybe at leisure you're just uh, you know sitting around and chatting around the um, you know about uh, around the dinner table or whatever. You know, so you should talk of them. So make this conversation about God's word, about who He is, uh, make it a normal thing. You know, it doesn't have to be super spiritual, right? It doesn't have to be uh, something that is. Uh, relegated to one particular day, 
you know, or one particular, you know, only in this place we talk about it, talk about, you know, God and his word, but may, may, may that be part of your everyday conversation. And, and then it's a, it talks about every external thing that you shall bind them, you shall, you know, uh, put them as display and write them on the doorposts and all that. So um, this is a very important uh, instruction. And, and, and uh, the thing is, if, if this is established in our homes, right, if we establish this in our homes, um, our homes can be a thriving place spiritually. You know, it need not be um, uh, you know, something ritualistic and parent, um, and, the, and, the, and the children uh, need not uh, you know, be in a place where they find everything about God or they, they find uh, everything about the word, something boring, something uh, you know, uninteresting. It's part of their lives. And as parents, we can actually do this. Right, um, and the home would be a place where the children learn. The home would be a place where uh, faith and faith in God and encounter and the supernatural becomes so normal. Right, um, and uh, so the responsibility is on parents. And I just thought we should, uh, you know, look at that um, even as we look at marriage, right, and uh, and later when we look at parenting. You know, we see that uh, this is one of our responsibilities. So, um, well, as married people, also, you know, as husband and wife, so let it let this be so. Let this be normal. And uh, I'm sharing this because uh, in our home, when when we when I grew up, uh, it was never like this. Like you know, well, we went to church. We we uh, uh, on Sundays we came back, but we never. Now, we did have our times of Bible reading and prayer, etc. But um, never discussed, never spoke, never had questions uh, answered, right? And um, and and that's a very important part. So uh, which which I missed out, which we missed out when we were growing up. So it need not be so right, in our homes. Okay, so let's pray. Let's um, let's ask the Lord to make this a reality, like in the homes that we established, in the homes that we are in right now, right? Okay. Let's pray. Father, we thank you, Lord, for this day. We, even as we looked at your word, God, we thank you for these instructions. Lord, we, we know that uh, you are uh, the builder of our lives. You are the one who builds our homes, who builds families. You're the designer of marriage and family. And so, God, um, we take every word that proceeds from your mouth, Lord, seriously, and we tre treasure, Lord, these instructions and commands in our hearts, God, um, not just to hear, but also to do, Father God. We thank you, Lord, that you've instructed us to teach, you instructed us, instructed us to, Lord, have casual conversations, Father God, in uh, every aspect of practical aspects of our lives, God, and so that, uh, Lord, um, your ways, oh God, and who you are, and encounters with you, God, um, Lord, and uh, and power encounters, God, and uh, Lord, the supernatural, Lord, becomes um, a part of our everyday lives, Father God. Even as we proclaim truth, even as we discuss the truth, and uh, even as Lord lies are replaced, and uh, uh, as as your truth, the truth of your word, becomes uh, rooted and embedded in our hearts. Master, we thank you. We pray that um, this will be a reality. Lord, in our lives, in the homes that we establish. And uh, just pray for those of us who are already married and, uh, Lord, have children. And uh, I just pray, God, that this will be a reality, Father God. And uh, yes, Master, may this be the model for those of us who are um, looking forward to getting married and establishing homes. May this be the model, Lord, uh, example of our homes, God. We thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, um, so last class we uh, we uh, started with communication, right? Um, communication and how important communication is. Um, I remember watching a tennis match, uh, and uh, those days between uh, uh, it was a doubles match. I forget um, uh, whom the, the I think it was a Davis Cup match. Uh, Leander Pace and Mahesh Bhupati, uh, Indian tennis players, and um, you know. They had a fallout, but uh, the, those days when they were really doing well, uh, I think they even won the Wimbledon doubles at some point. I'm not very sure, but they won one of the Grand Slams. So, 
uh, anyway, so they the communication between them, you know, even during the games, uh, even, even between points was amazing. Like they will always be communicating with each other, always high-fiving each other, always, uh, um, you know, there'll be some kind of communication happening between each other. And uh, uh, that's something that you notice immediately, you know, when you watch the game. And uh, they were highly successful. In, and, and what happened was something happened, some miscommunication, some misunderstanding, uh, some kind of an ego thing happened and then uh, there, there was a breakdown of communication, breakdown of relationship, and uh, and you know uh, they stopped playing as a team, uh, which was quite unfortunate because uh, you know, they would have really done well. They would have gone on to win many tournaments. Actually, they're highly skilled players, both of them, uh, experience everything, but uh, because of the breakdown of the relationship, they didn't actually you know continue to play further. Um, so similarly, you know, in marriage, um, which is a, a relationship, you know, between two people, covenant relationship, uh, it could be sometimes two, two very unlikely people, two very different people. Communication is very, very uh, important. Um, just, just to review a few things that we looked at last uh, class, uh, let me just share that um, uh, the um, PowerPoint with you. Right. Okay. So, you know, um, so communication skills are required for marriage, and uh, this is very different from general social communication or business professional communication, uh, communication with acquaintances. You know, where you there, where is there is just exchange of facts, exchange of information. Right. So we see different levels. It could be casual, professional. Uh, it could be friendship, and intimate. You know, as you go further down the list, you see that there is a sharing not only of information but also of uh, we are expressing feelings, expressing fears, expressing likes and dislikes, and so on. Right. So we are being more and more transparent. We are becoming less and less informal, uh, or less and less formal. Sorry, uh, more and more transparent um, with each other. Right, so making ourselves more and more vulnerable also in the in the in the process, right? So PTs um, of meaningful or established strong communication um, needs time because uh, we need to invest that time. It cannot happen in an instant. Um, so we need to be able to uh, set aside time. Okay, so always remember that. And, and that time should be a meaningful time. Uh, intense. It's not just time, you know. It's just not just saying, okay, you know, we spent half an hour, and uh, now you know we are communicating uh, well. You know, it's not just that. It is intentional, being intentional during that time. And uh, also, we saw that it needs to be at a time when our uh, we, we are energetic. You know, we 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 our energy level is um, is high. Okay, so uh, well, well, there could be certain things uh, we are discussing about. Okay, how to do things? What are those things to be bought? What are those things to be done? You know, typical, uh, you know, uh, maybe shop talk if you want to call it that. You know, to-do lists uh, and things to be done in the home and, and all that. Uh, but from that place, uh, we need to move on to talk about what's happening with oneself, or our challenges, our uh, joy, and our uh, struggles, maybe uh, you know, expressing feelings, emotions, uh, what is happening in our lives, uh, you know. So that uh, needs to take place, and um, so we need to make this happen. Okay, it cannot happen automatically. So we need to make these things happen. Uh, be intentional about set aside time uh, uh, to do this, and also plan for you know extended times even. Right, maybe a vacation, maybe weekends, um, where you can set aside time. You know, people li live very busy lives, um, especially in the city and and even otherwise. You know, right, uh, very busy um, lives. And uh, like I, I know of a, 
uh, of a couple that at certain at a point in their lives, like they were working in two different shifts, right? Both were working in BPOs. Um, so, um, so the husband would work probably uh, uh, like I think six in the morning till you know some sometime in the evening. The, uh, so, or the wife will work, uh, you know, that kind of a day shift. Uh, but the husband was working, you know, evening. He starts in the evening, and then so there was a uh, very little common time you know one was leaving the house the other one was coming in and uh, it was like that so it was for a season so um so i remember that uh, they would be intentional you know uh, they realized the challenge of uh, and you know if they, they let, let things slip they could just go on you know for months without even sometimes seeing each other right in an alert state so they had to make time uh, to be with each other make time to for you know meaningful conversation and so on right so uh, it's very important the second one we see is trust where one grows in trust right now uh, i'm sure that when we get married or prepare ourselves for get getting married we grow in trust Right. We learn to have confidence in the other person and uh, uh, grow in trust. And sometimes when trust is broken, it takes a lot of effort and it takes a lot of time to rebuild that trust okay, where there is unfaithfulness or where there is uh, you know, commitment that is not kept for whatever reason. And repeatedly, if it happens over a period of time, uh, trust is broken. So trust is, um, it has to be earned, it has to be given, um, it has to be, um, uh, you know, it has to be uh, honest, right? And nothing fake about it. So if there is no trust, then it's going to be um, very, very difficult. For the marriage to be strong you know there is no trust because if if there is no trust if i do not trust you and um, you know whatever things you say i will always uh, be second guessing right in the sense i will always be thinking you know are you are you saying the right thing are you uh, trying to manipulate you know uh, what uh, what is your agenda you know, really, in uh, in saying these things into me, in um, uh, sorry, uh, in communicating these things, you know, what is your agenda? Um, so I'm going to be constantly thinking that way, right? So, um, so trust has to be built, and uh, we, certain mistakes that we can make when we are building trust is uh, uh, when something is shared in confidence. Okay, let's say uh, it, some things about. Uh, past uh, some mistakes we did okay so uh, the, the husband shares with the wife or the wife shares with the husband um and in that moment maybe it's a you know vulnerable quiet moment and we hear it we 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 know it's something difficult and and all that but then we receive it um what happens is in a moment of conflict okay if there is a you know, time of misunderstanding, if there is a conflict, maybe, you know, there's an argument uh, and a heated argument, maybe. And the temptation is to bring out this, you know, you made this mistake in the past. You yourself told me, you know, this is what you did in the past. And, uh, uh, and you are always like this, right? There is a tendency to bring that out and and speak that out and hurt the other person. Uh, maybe to win an argument, maybe to win that um, you know, um, that fight, uh, that quarrel. So there is a tendency to bring that out and use it as a weapon. Okay, so if that is done, then again, uh, why should I trust you to share more about my life when I know that you are going to use it as a bullet, you're going to use it as a weapon against me in future, right? So um, I will not be able to trust you. So whenever something is said in confidence, and whenever someone shares um, some, you know, very vulnerable information, though there is a temptation to bring it out and you know um, put that out there, uh, we need to be careful not to, um, you know, break down. That element of trust. Then the third thing we saw was transparency, right? Uh, as we move down from casual to professional to friendship to intimate, there is always a greater level of transparency, 
right you know there's nothing hidden right and there is great joy and great freedom uh when you move to that place and that also comes with time and trust right it comes with time and trust where you're able to where where I, where I open my heart and say okay you can look into my life you know this is who i am you can look into my life i'm not going to hide anything um or if you ask me any questions i'm not going to stonewall you and you know block things uh from uh, from your from you uh, i'm going to be open and honest right right okay so um I am trust transparency. Okay, so this exercise uh, we're not going to go through, but you have it in your notes, and um, you know it's a it's a good thing to go through. If you're a married person, maybe you can do it with your spouse, and you can you know do those scores. You can put the scores there and uh, and count them up and see where you actually stand uh, regarding you know as a couple uh, regarding communication, right? Uh, adequate time for meaningful conversations you know if you're going to say it's always true or if it's the other end of the spectrum is okay never never we don't never we do we have meaningful conversations during the week you know that's now that's not a good thing and uh, so that needs to change obviously uh, you know uh, well the, the challenge would be one person feels that oh yeah we have been having great meaningful conversation and the other person feels no we haven't right um and which means that person's need uh, for meaningful conversations has not been met so um you know it's time to take stock time to change so over the week over the weekend um i feel free to express uh, i feel my spouse pays attention when i'm speaking i feel i'm being understood I f i'm not afraid that my speaking will lead into an argument I feel we understand each other's perspectives and frames of reference. Uh, I can talk at the level of friendship and intimacy. I feel safe and secure in sharing secrets, weaknesses, and challenges. I feel my trust, spouse trusts what I say, and so on. Okay. So the, it's a good exercise to do uh, as a couple. It's a good exercise to do as, um, uh, you know, maybe even as uh, during the courtship days. Okay. Now, courtship days, it, it, may not really fully apply you know you're not, you're not really um spending as much time uh, you know together you have your own lives and uh, so um so this would apply to people who are married okay but just to let us know that you know that uh, these are factors there or these are elements there in communication and when you break it down and you know you ask these questions or address this this will really help in communication or building communication okay let's look at um, uh, why communication is important or why would uh, communication be an important building block for a strong marriage okay um, so we see that with communication you know when you have good communication you know and understand each other okay because you're scared I mean you're sharing uh, your heart and the other person is also free to share his or her heart, right? They are also uh, coming forward to share, and because of which, um, the you you getting to know the person. Right? If there's uh, stuff that is shared more about you, then you get to know and understand okay this is what my spouse is like this is what my spouse understands uh, oh this is what my spouse likes this is what my spouse uh, dislikes okay. so communication is uh, very important um, and uh, it helps to know and understand so in in a marriage you know we we are growing in knowing each other right we are growing in understanding one another right um so maybe we start at a place you know early days of marriage where we do not understand each other as much but then we need to continue to grow in knowing one another and understanding one another okay because it helps build a healthy and strong marriage right the second thing is to work as a team 
right? Uh, you know, if you, I, I'm sure when we looked at leadership, you know, we uh, we, we would learn that uh, okay, there needs to be communication in a team. You know, what happens if a, if in a team that uh, one does not talk to the other? Okay, you have a team of let's say five people, ten people, uh, and they're not talking to one another. They're not communicating to one another. You know, if you if you look at a game also, you know, like football or cricket, if if they're not communicating strategies if they're not communicating you know uh, how what our plan is going to be how we're going to play uh, if they're not communicating uh, to one another then we see that there's a you know, it's not a healthy team right if they're going to think within themselves and and think that okay the other person will understand or you know there's going to be a it will not happen right so to work together to function together as a team as husband and wife there needs to be communication, right? And healthy communication, right? Okay. Um, third one is to support each other, right? To communicate and say, hey, I need help. I need help in this area. Or uh, can you help me in this? Or to encourage one another. Uh, there needs to be, uh, you know, you need to be able to express. Right? You need to be able to say, okay, I need help. Or, 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 speak encouraging words and saying you're doing a good job you're doing a great job um you know and so to nurture one another you know we saw that in Ephesians 5 that um husbands you know nourish cherish all those words so to nurture uh one another we need to be able to use you know nurturing words and right? uh, words of life speaking words of life uh, maybe the one of the you know uh, one of the uh, spouse is going through a very very difficult time maybe they lost their you know loved one could be a parent you know, a relative grand grandparent whatever so to be able to encourage and um, or maybe they're having a tough time at work tough uh, challenges um, with um, you know, even with in-laws and so on, to be able to uh, ask questions, to be able to encourage and share, it's it's very important right? to support one another, to resolve issues. You know, we're going to look at resolving conflicts, um, but to you know, to resolve things, meaning to solve the problem, uh, one needs to be able to communicate. Okay, just imagine like. Uh, Many times we think, okay, you need to understand, you need to know. Uh, you, you, you know, just because two people are married, we cannot take into, um, you know, we cannot assume that they will understand each other perfectly, right? Um, to be able to resolve conflicts, we need to be able to uh, share and communicate. You know, the thing is this, uh, you know, one <laughs> very uh, common common example, I think. Uh, I mean, this really happens uh, a lot of times for us as a family. You know, we're just driving back from uh, after finishing church service. We're going back home. And uh, and three of us, me, my, my wife and daughter, and it happened a couple of times. So, uh, you know, just stays fresh in our minds. So we're just coming back home. And I'm thinking, you know, maybe, uh, uh, you know, it's because we haven't cooked any food and it's too late to go back and cook and, you know, all that. And it's already like, we're all, we're all hungry. And I'm thinking maybe I should, you know, we should stop by a, a nice Chinese place uh, and sit and have uh, Chinese food. And my wife is thinking, you know, I've, uh, I I really like some rasam and rice and, you know, nice South Indian food. And and my daughter's thinking maybe, you know, you know, it, it'd be great to have a pizza. Uh, all three of us are thinking different things and we haven't shared that. And suddenly I just, you know, blurt out, OK, OK, let's uh, let's stop at, um, you know, this place, Chinese restaurant. Let's stop by here and uh, let's have it. And, and suddenly everybody's like, oh, I thought we were going here. I thought we were stopping by here. I don't really feel like eating this. Uh, you know, I, I think we should. So everybody's like, you know, disappointed. Uh, I thought you, oh, I 
I, I told you, no, you didn't. And, uh, and we are hungry, you know, hungry, irritable, disappointed. Uh, they don't, we're not, that somehow we, we have, no, not all of us are going to be eating our favorite food. Um, and it uh, results in a lot of, uh, you know, tension there. Uh, so communication is important to share your needs and also to resolve conflicts. You know, at that point, to be able to share and say, okay, fine. So then we came upon, a, you know, tactic. We said, okay, um, you know, one Sunday, one person will have their way. Okay, so this Sunday, this person's desire. Okay, they decide, and maybe certain Sundays we have food at home. So no stopping anywhere. We are going straight home and we are going to, um, you know, have food at home. No stopping it anywhere. So to be able to resolve, to be able to come to a consensus, you know, it's it's just common understanding that one needs to be able to uh, talk right, and communicate. Okay. Grow together spiritually. Now, you know, we, we just saw the, the passage that we read this morning, Deuteronomy 6, talks about how we need to teach, how we need to talk. Right. We're talking about spiritual matters. We're talking about the Word of God. We're talking about, uh, you know, we're sharing testimonies. Um, so to grow spiritually together, we need to share, speak into each other's lives, um, ask questions, um, give space and permission for people to ask questions, right? and, uh, and not really have an unhealthy communication of, oh, you didn't know this. Or how can you ask questions about this? Well, the person might have some very strong reasons, you know, and and all that. Right? So uh, growing spiritually together. We also need to guard our marriages. Okay. Um, the marriage relationship needs to be guarded. Why? Because there's a real enemy, a defeated enemy, a defeated foe who walks about, goes about like a roaring lion seeking to devour, right? trying to steal, kill, and destroy. And whatever God has put together, right? and many times we open the doors for the enemy to step in. Right? Uh, and uh, one, of the, one of the doors that we open is the door of a marriage relationship. We, door, we open the door for the enemy to step in. So we need to guard our marriage. Okay, so when it comes to guard, guarding our marriage, to have a healthy and close relationship with your spouse is, is something that helps guard our marriage, helps guard that intimacy in marriage. Okay, When I say intimacy, it's not just physical intimacy, but emotional intimacy. And what would happen if the spouse feels that, hey, I can't share these things. My, my, you know, my spouse will never understand. So these deep things, these deep, maybe hurts and fears and all these emotional things, the spouse begins to share with someone else, okay, of uh, maybe some other, of an opposite gender. Then it becomes an emotional tie, becomes an emotional attachment, becomes an emotional affair, right? And leads to all other unwanted, unnecessary things. And, and the reason is this, we have not guarded <clears throat> the relationship, at the intimacy, the emotional intimacy. It's very, very important because we can live under the same roof and be thousands and thousands of miles away from each other emotionally. Right? And we don't want that to happen. So the, how do we bridge that distance? It's only through healthy communication right? because it's a bridge. We speak words, it's a bridge. When we resolve things, it's a bridge. Bringing people closer together. When we, when we um, encourage one another, that's a bridge, right? So um, guarding our marriage, very important. Nurturing children, you know, like we saw, we nurture, we encourage uh, with good communication, healthy communication, right? And uh, um, we learn more about uh, that in parenting, you know, cherishing memories and uh, talking about, um, you know, the good times and everything. Uh, we see that it involves a communication. So, um, so communication does not mean that you just keep talking, 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 talking. You know, sometimes you might have a, a wrong idea of that. Right? Uh, just come on, one person is just going on and on and on. That's not communication. Right? 
um, communication is being able to convey, express. And it's a two-way street where you're receiving, right? You're receiving, understanding what the other person is saying as well. Okay, which brings us to the next one, which is um, meaningful. Con it involves a genuine expression or expressing our heart, but it also involves uh, listening attentively. Okay, um, listening attentively. So the thing is, uh, this many times people do not think about listening as an important aspect of communication. Right? We just we just focused on sharing, speaking, uh, where we are not really uh, thinking about understanding the person through attentive listening, okay? listening to them attentively, which is really uh, an important part of it. Let's uh, you know look at these uh, two scriptures, James chapter 1, verse 19. Uh, remember this, my dear friends, everyone must be quick to listen, slow to speak, slow to anger. Right? Quick to listen, quick to receive, quick to hear and understand, uh, slow to speak, slow to become angry, slow to anger. Uh, Proverbs 18.13, listen before you answer. If you do don't, you are being stupid and insulting. Right? <clears throat> so when it comes to attentive listening, it's a. Uh, uh, it's different from just hearing, right? Because uh, you know, physically, we. I mean, of course, if our hearing is okay, we can hear. We can hear a lot of things. We can hear words. We can hear songs. We can. We can hear the other person, right? Say, what did the other person say? You know, this person said this, 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 this. Okay. But when we are listening, that means we are trying to understand the person. Okay. First of all, understand what they are saying. We're trying to understand what they are feeling, right? Um, okay. Sometimes you know people use that word. I, I hear what they're saying. Okay, meaning okay, I, I I'm hearing that, but uh, are you really understanding what I'm feeling? You know, all the emotions that they're going through. Maybe it's anger. Maybe it's irritation. Maybe it's uh, fear. Um, you know, uh, maybe it's sorrow. But are you understanding it? Because uh, when you're listening, we are all, all, we are also trying to understand what they're feeling, okay, and uh, um, what they're expressing, uh, even without words, right? Because we we express a lot of things. We might say a lot of things, but uh, when you look at the words and we look at our expression, when you look at our body language, right, it could be two different things. Right. Suppose you ask somebody, "How are you doing?" and uh, "I'm okay," right? <laughs> um, if you take the words, what did they say? They said, "I'm okay," right? But uh, if you if you consider the tone of their voice and the expression of their face, when you consider that, that's attentive listening, right? And the person says, "I'm okay." And uh, you say, oh, great, fantastic. That's good. You know, let's get going. Uh, we're actually missed out. We missed out. We just heard the words, but we didn't really hear the emotions behind the words. Right? We didn't really attentively um, perceive the emotion. Or we, we heard the words, but we didn't see the body language where they looked down and they were, you know, um, uh, they were weary when they said, I'm okay. They said I'm okay, but actually they were not, right? So, so things like that. Um, the body language. So, when we say listening, we are listening to understand the person, okay? Not to, not just to understand the information that they are uh, that they are conveying, okay? Uh, we are listening to understand the person, and more so, and typically in marriage, okay? Okay, uh, we're going to look at uh, okay how to be um, you know uh, good listeners and some keys to good listening and and uh, so before that I just wanted to ask uh, any any questions here so far on communication on uh, you know, on whatever we've shared so far anything at all anybody any questions.
Okay. Okay. So, um, so the the question is, um, you know, uh, is everybody great at expressing themselves? Okay. Um, that's a question that we need to ask ourselves. You know, am I good, or you know, um, or maybe we can ask ourselves. You know, what is it that um, you know, what is it that prevents me from communicating or expressing myself? And sometimes we, you know, we want to say, hold back, right? So, uh, or we don't feel like saying, we don't feel like talking, right? So, it's good to think about those moments and say, okay, is it just tiredness, plain weary, you know, I don't know, or is there something that is holding me back from, from really, you know, talking, sharing, right? Or maybe as a as a person, you know, we're not used to those things, right? We are very private, right? Yeah, okay, I think success has a question. Oh, all of also, yeah, yes, yeah, go ahead, please. Yeah, I want to ask a question. Mm -hmm. If you look at the rate of divorce today in the mm -hmm. world, mm -hmm. can we say that it's actually a lack of communication that caused this divorce? Or mm -hmm. something? Yeah, I think it's a mix of uh, expectation. Uh, it could also be, I mean, many factors, like I'm just guessing here. Uh, it could also be uh, expectation, wrong expectation coming from a wrong understanding of what marriage is. You know, that's that's a big one because uh, many times we see that people have a wrong understanding of marriage itself. So, um, so which means the expectations are different. You know, you ask that question: Why are you getting married? Oh, um, you know, I just felt that uh, uh, that I need. Uh, you know, I need to come home to a good home cooked meal. <laughs> you know, you get then those responses. That's why I got married. Why are you getting married? Oh, you know, I, I just feel my that my you know sex drive is overboard, and you know, I, you know, you hear all these kinds of things. So the expectation is different, and uh, and and also you know, we human beings at the at the core, you know, are self centered, looking for. How I can please myself, uh, what the other person can do to help, you know, please me, and uh, so it's a it could be a wrong understanding. Also, you know, lack of commitment, right? It could be lack of commitment, uh, faith, uh, being unfaithful because of that lack of commitment, not really guarding, uh, or not really knowing that you know, being emotionally um, uh, close to a person who's not your spouse can actually lead to a lot of other things, right? So not having our guards up, you know, just saying, oh, that's the best friend. This is the best friend. That's the best friend. And how's your, what, what about your spouse? Oh, I don't know. We just married. You know, you crack all those jokes about, you know, you know what my husband is like, you know what my house. And then you have someone else who is your best confidant, you know, you're just sharing everything. That results in emotional distance. So, so it's a combination of all this, I would say, success. And definitely communication also. You know, and because of all this, communication breaks down. Right? You're just information, you're just good morning, good evening, or even that is not there. There's silence. You know, if if not for children, they won't be the house will be very silent, you know, in some homes. Right. And some people say, Okay, you go tell your father that uh, this thing is ready. You go tell your mother to do this. You know what's happening there. You know it's like somebody's a mediator, right? So big communication breaks down. Yeah. Okay. So I hope that helps uh, success. Yeah. Uh, we have one more question from John. Okay. Any practical tips to reduce church matter discussions at home and to improve personal communication? Yeah. I mean, this happens to uh, you know ministering couples, right? Um, in fact, uh, this coming Saturday, we have a marriage enrichment uh, workshop here in Bangalore. And uh, um, so those of you who are probably in and around Bangalore, you're most welcome to register, be part of it. So it's called Nurturing Missional Families. 
right? where both husband and wife are in ministry. Maybe you're working in the same ministry. Maybe you're working with two different ministries. And, you know, you, uh, uh, and especially, I think I can understand John Paul's question because, uh, you know, that's the same case here. Both my wife and I work for the church. So uh, a lot of conversation happens about church, about the service, about church, about getting ready for the service. Um, you know, a lot of things happen that way. So so any practical tips to reduce? I think it's just you you decide when you're going to talk about this and when not to talk about it. Uh, and it's a uh, and it'll come with uh, with practice. Um, so where you, you say, okay, at home, let's not, uh, you know, let's not, certain things are very, 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 it'll be crucial, right? There could be an emergency and uh, you can't not talk about it. But generally, you know, you just say, okay, we won't discuss solving these things. Let's, let's set aside some time, you know, maybe in the morning, maybe in the evening, whatever. We'll discuss those things where you're, you know, formally we're talking about church things. I think that will help, uh, John. Yes, Pastor. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. So, so see, one thing I realized was uh, early days of getting married. So, like, I don't consider myself to be an introvert. Uh, for me, it's like uh, normally. I mean, I, I'm okay talking to strangers, talking to the thing. I, I'm I'm fine. But there are times when I'd like to be quiet. You know, uh, there are sometimes when I, I don't want to be with people. Uh, I just want to recharge my batteries, you know, socially. I, I just want to, you know, it's like that. And also, uh, when I was working uh, for uh, these organizations, uh, different sales organizations, where the most of the day was meeting people, like talking to people, meeting people, and uh, whatever words I had, I just, oh, actually, actually I had used up. <laughs> So when I came back home and to my wife, uh, like talking was the last thing that I had in mind. <laughs> I didn't want to talk. I just wanted to sit quietly. Right? And so uh, in the early days of marriage, it, uh, it was difficult where uh, I didn't want to talk. Whereas my wife was just waiting to talk because she was not working at that time. She was at home alone the whole day and she was just waiting for me to come back home so she could just talk to me find out about what's happening and share about what was happening in her life so um so it was a little bit of a struggle so then i i realized that hey i can't just go with the flow like that so so i would just uh, i was okay asking questions waiting uh, you know just listening to her talk and uh, and i just maybe over a cup of tea you know just listen and just recharge and and after a while, I'll be fine to talk about my day uh, and talk about what happened, et cetera, but not immediately. So um, so that was something which didn't come naturally to me and definitely not communicating, uh, you know, at that point. So, so you just understand, you know, you just come to an understanding of that, okay, at this point, at this time of the day, I'm not a great communicator. Right? Uh, at this time of day, um, you know, sometimes you're a morning person. Your spouse is not. The, your spouse can just barely manage monosyllables at that time of the day. You are just raring to talk and you're discussing different concepts and sunrise and all that. Whereas your spouse just has one word, two words. You know, they just not started yet the day yet. So to understand that and say, okay, this is not the best time of the day. To have a discussion on spiritual matters, <laughs> I had to talk about end times and all. This is not the best time, so you know you figure out right, as you go along. Okay, so we'll stop here, take a break, and we'll come back at ten. Okay.